So hello and welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining us today for Closing the Loop from Plastics to Product. My name is Yvonne Ritchie and I am a project coordinator here at the Green Municipal Fund. And today's webinar is the final webinar in our series on plastic waste management solutions for Canadian municipalities. This webinar series is offered to you by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities through their Green Municipal Fund. Um, so before I hand things over to today's speakers, I'd like to take just a few more minutes uh, to provide some context on the Green Municipal Fund for you. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities has been the national voice of municipal governments in Canada since 1901, um, and we offer diverse programs and services that are designed to support municipalities, uh, such as many that you are connecting with today. Uh, one of these programs is the Green Municipal Fund, which was established in 2000 after an endowment by the Government of Canada. The fund has a double mission to support municipal initiatives in sustainable development through its funding, as well as to be able to share knowledge and lessons learned uh, through online resources and tools, through training opportunities, uh, networking opportunities, and peer learning as well. The Green Municipal Fund is available for projects in five different sectors, including transportation, water performance, energy performance, brownfields, and of course, waste reduction. The funding is available to all municipal governments and their partners for plans, studies, pilot projects, and for capital projects. And since its inception, the Green Municipal Fund has funded more than 1,400 initiatives in over 500 communities across Canada. If you go to our website, you can access our approved projects database, uh, which has a series of resources on our funded projects, including case studies, reports, contact information, and more. Uh, so we'll send a link to that in the chat box that you're welcome to use for reference, but of course you can always search for that on your own time as well. I would also encourage you to sign up for our weekly newsletter, FCM Connect, to get all the latest updates on what we have to offer, including other webinars, workshops, and programs that support Canadian municipalities. And lastly, we'll also be sharing the link to the uh, to the webinar recording. So the, the first two webinars that we, we did in this series are now available online, and the others are going to be posted shortly as well. So you can find those directly on our webpage as well as on our YouTube channel. If you do have to step away at any point or have colleagues who are missing today's webinar, the session is of course also being recorded and will be online in a few weeks. So over the last five weeks, we've been joined by many of you from all over Canada. Um, it's been fantastic just to see the, the level of interest uh, in these topics and we've had really excellent questions and engagement throughout. So, so welcome to everybody, whether you're joining us from all the way up in Whitehorse and Yellowknife from St. John's, um, a few people even from the States as well, which is, which is great to see. Um, and we have a really diverse group of people on the line as well, um, really showing the level of passion that you have. If it's either you're working as a waste management advisor and been in this topic for, for years, or if you're a community volunteer who's just really passionate about the topic, it's great to have you all on the line. And by joining us virtually today, we've estimated that we are saving about 110,000 kilograms of CO2, uh, as well a little over 1,000 kilograms of waste, uh, just looking at flights alone, not to mention all the other resources that might be used if you were staying in hotels and that kind of thing. Um, so thank you all for your online presence today. That uh, really uh, does help us uh, use the technology to, to contribute towards uh, some sustainable initiatives. So to provide some context for today's session, uh, these webinars are intended to demonstrate and showcase the many ways in which plastic waste is being addressed by municipalities across Canada. Through past webinars, we've seen significant efforts globally and nationally to stem the flow of plastics leaking out of the economy and into the environment. And we have also explored some of the specific responses that municipalities are taking to address the challenges of plastic waste management in Canada. Today's webinar will explore innovative technologies for processing and using plastic waste after it has been collected, ultimately helping to foster the local economy and circular economy. In particular, we'll be examining a case study of a partnership uh, between a municipality in Quebec and a startup company to tackle some of the challenges of plastics that are traditionally not being recycled. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to, uh, to introduce our speakers for today's webinar. First, we have Maggie Ice, who is an environmental advisor for the city of Salaberry to Valleyfield. Maggie is a biologist by training with a specialization in ecology and also holds an MBA in project management. She has more than 15 years management experience in the environment and sustainable development for municipal organizations. Her academic and professional experience and her leadership have been instrumental in developing various policy mechanisms and gaining community support, helping to attain ambitious goals and build a more sustainable community. Over the course of her career, she has initiated many innovative projects with the city of Salaberry to Valleyfield, including the recovery of residential polystyrene by PureWave Incorporated, a local technology and development business. And so Maggie is also joined today by Virginie Boussier, 
who is the Vice President of Communications, Marketing, and Government Relations at FiroWave. Virginie has numerous years of experience in strategic council and management in communications and public affairs functions, including in the environmental and manufacturing areas. She holds a BA in communications and in political science, as well as an MBA. She also served as Director of Communications and Public Affairs at Eco Entreprise Quebec, a private nonprofit organization representing companies that place containers, packaging, and printed matter on the Quebec market. Her unique experience with various stakeholders in the recycling ecosystem, brand owners, and government and private institutions, as well as her ability to build strong partnerships, brings significant value to Pure Waste strategy to move innovative technology for recycling plastics onto local and international markets. So Maggie and Virginie, thank you both so much for joining us. Um, I will now have things over to you. So you should now have control of the slides and you'll have about 30 minutes for your presentation, um, after which we'll have maybe 20 minutes for questions to wrap it up. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be uh, here with you today and to share our experience uh, with the pilot project for uh, polystyrene recycling. It's uh, Maggie speaking. It's my first webinar in English, so I will do my best. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to present the plan. Uh, it will be uh, first the location of the city Oops. Um, after the polystyrene general information, the partnership between uh, Salaberry de Valleyfield and Parowave. Uh, the description of the pilot, uh, pilot project and the key figures, details about uh, power wave technology and uh, transportation profitability. Finally, we will talk about um, success factors, improvements uh, to be made, and the next step uh, of the project pilot. So we'll have a joint presentation. So Maggie and I will be uh, sharing the, the slides and alternate, so uh, just to walk you through the project. Okay. So first, uh, I will present you uh, Salaberry de Valleyfield is as a regional city featuring uh, more than 40,000 citizens, surrounded uh, by uh, water and located next to Montreal, just at uh, 25 kilometers west of the Metropolitan Island, close from Ontario and United States. So uh, Salaberry de Valleyfield. Uh, uh, fe features a uh, unique lifestyle in a natural and urban environment for the citizen and outfitting road access, uh, uh, arbor, and intermodal station for the industries. Uh, we have a um, di diversified economy, strong industrial, in institutional, and commercial operation. In recent years, uh, Salaberry Valley Field has been booming uh, thanks to a new and vibrant economy with uh, identified four main development streams, uh, evidencing sizable opportunities and fostering networking opportunities between existing industries. Uh, chemical, metalworking, transportation, intermodal, and logistics. And the uh, last one is uh, environment and recycling, one of the main business areas for environment remains waste management. So um, we have a sustainable development action plan that you can consult at this link that uh, you can show. And um, a culture fostering with new technologies like uh, the partnership with Paris. So today's uh, presentation would tackle uh, polystyrene, so plastic number six, which is a plastic that was not widely recycled up until now. Um, polystyrene is a key packaging uh, material for, uh, especially for the food industry, um, because of uh, its great uh, characteristics such as insulation, uh, sustainability, and low weight features. Um, we also know that the use of plastic has been multiplied by 20 over the past 50 years, and it should double in the next 20 years. So it's all the more important that we find innovative solutions to recycle those plastics. So despite its wide use, um, the end of life cycle uh, of polystyrene and of plastics in general is an issue. Um, there is um, you know, some recycling made through mechanical recycling, but it has its limitations uh, in terms of polystyrene recycling. And to the point that it became uh, public enemy number six, like we like to call it. Um, so that's where the pyrex uh, chemical recycling technology kicks in. 
uh, as it helps uh, regenerate polystyrene to the state of molecular, similar to the virgin material that makes other PS uh, endlessly. So this is a new local technology which uh, has been developed in Quebec after eight years of R&D and is now in operation uh, in a pilot plant in Salaberry de Valley Field. So that's why it was natural for us to uh, to develop this partnership uh, this partnership with the city. So I'll be talking a little bit more about the technology later in the presentation, but now I'll turn it over to uh, to Maggie to talk to you about how the partnership was born. So the partnership was born uh, first by a citizen demand. Uh, there is an organism uh, initiative in Salaberry Valleyfield who volunteers brought all the PS in Ontario because uh, it was a recover at uh, in this uh, province and it was not a recover in Quebec. So. Um, the citizen makes some uh, uh, some uh, pressure on the, the the elected official to uh, to take a, a action to recover the polystyrene. So um, we uh, had a advisory committee in the Salaberry Valley Field, and the decision was taken in 2016 to uh, look for innovative alternatives to um, recovery the the polystyrene. So the research, uh, we research with the Polytechnic to have a solution for this problematic. And in uh, 2016, Pure Rave uh, came here in Salaberry Valley Field uh, and uh, exposure in uh, the industrial park. So the discussion between uh, Pure Rave and the city of Salaberry Valley Field uh, started in uh, 2017 and the Project, the pilot project starts at in uh, at fall of uh, 2018. The um, the Power Aid par uh, partnership stands for a province-wide issue, so the recovery of the PS6. The main purpose of the the pilot project is to assess assess the feasibility of the recovering of polystyrene from citizens and the industry, commercial and institution on Salaberry Valley Fields territory for treatment to the power race plant. There are five components to the project and share responsibility between the partners. Uh, so the collection, the transportation, the treatment, uh, awareness and communications with the population and the cost evaluation. So the city of Salaberry Valley Field is responsible of the collection, transportation and communication, parade in charge of the processing, and we share responsibilities of the KPI and cost evaluation. The project pilot term is about one year. The main issue is that expanded PS is a material made up of 90% of air. Its low density has a significant impact on cost of transportation to processing centers, and therefore few municipalities recover this material. So the solution to this recovery problem is to have a single drop-off location. And we chose the eco center because it's a location where citizens already bring their material with more than 30,000 entries a year. When the citizens come to the eco center with their polystyrene, the staff reception it uh, in an identified island after a first sort of material. You can see the place. And they store in a marine uh, container after recovery of plastic, uh, big bag, uh, transparent bags. Uh, and each week, the municipal staff ship the power raise, to power raise four to five bags of 3,800 3, liters. And actually, the capacity of power raise is uh, about uh, 25 bags a week. To make sure polystyrene gets to the eco center, we need a good communication strategy. And this communication strategy is to streamline the message and speak language that people can understand. So we don't use the technical term 
polystyrene, we instead use the term styrofoam, as you can see. In addition, we are using a mean, meaningful visual because the challenge is the high rate of uh, functional illiterate in our community. Posting communication tools on various platforms and social media, newspaper, movies, video, television, so, social media, and others. And um, finally, engaging the population and selecting a meaningful drop-off location based on citizen pattern like the eco center. So in terms of uh, the styrofoam items that are accepted uh, uh, through the pilot project, uh, there's uh, polystyrene expanded, uh, extruded, rigid or standard. So we can think of food packaging, uh, plates, utensils, picnic cups, insulating materials, yogurt cups, a uh, place for meat or fish, and protective materials and packaging as well. So those are all accepted in uh, at the Eco Center. Um, a few words about PyroWave. So PyroWave is a clean tech who's developed an innovative technology of chemical recycling for mixed plastics, thanks to microwave depolymerization. I'll tell you a bit more about uh, the process later on in the presentation. Um, the innovation is a scientific breakthrough uh, stemming from three engineers from Polytechnic Montreal, which has been recognized by the scientific community uh, through numerous prizes. Um, to name a few, there's the Innovation Prize from the Ordre des Ingénieurs du Québec uh, that we received last year. Um, we had the first prize for the World Award of Industrial Chemistry last year as well, and we were named among the uh, 50 Clean Tech to Watch. So uh, at Paris, there's a team of engineers and uh, experienced professionals that are supported by a board of directors with uh, an extensive experience uh, in petrochemical and recycling markets. So to understand the, how power wave works, uh, you have to understand how plastic is made, and it's like Lego blocks, and the Lego blocks are the monomers. So what we do is we break the Lego blocks using microwaves that break the links between these blocks to bring them back into monomers. Once this is done, uh, these blocks or monomers can be reassembled uh, into the same items or uh, into other products. So in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the markets for, uh, for the monomers and that are reassembled, so we can think about making new food packaging or new packaging, uh, or also um, rubber, so synthetic uh, tires, for example. Uh, so those are all uh, markets for, um, for those monomers uh, that are recycled. So what PyroWave does and what the chemical recycling does is a true plastic circular economy. So from the Valley Field Eco Center, uh, the polystyrene is shipped to PyroWave, and then we break it down, uh, we break down the polymer chain, so the Lego blocks, uh, and then that treatment is called depolymerization. Um, so what's produced is an oil, uh, which is a 90% monomer rich, and it's then sent to a petrochemical company that remanufactures re re new uh, polystyrene resins, which is identical to virgin resin, vir uh, resins. So the benefits of uh, this type of recycling is uh, that we generate two times less greenhouse gas by reusing recycled plastics rather than extracting new fossil materials from the earth. Uh, in addition to new products, this process also makes it possible to reman remanufacture new food packaging materials since the feedstock is completely free of all organic and inorganic contaminants. So we can create uh, food grade packaging from that resign. The recycling process can be repeated uh, endless, endlessly as it brings the material back to its original state uh, and therefore decreases our dependency to oil. So that, those are the fundamentals of circular economy uh, and it's done locally. So the technology is, is, uh, itself is a modular uh, technology that fits the size of a small container. Uh, it consumes 10 times less energy than virgin PS and the energy that is generated through the process can be uh, recovered to heat the building. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the, the performance of the process is very high, so it's up to 90% of monomers that are, uh, that are collected through the process. Uh, and the processing capacity is uh, between 100 and 200 kilograms an hour. 
So uh, each processed uh, ton of polystyrene avoids releasing more than two tons of GHG. So we can increase the treatment uh, capacity if we add if we add on more modules. So that's uh, when we increase uh, the capacity, and ideally, uh, those modules should be located where the supply is or close to a strategic location where volumes of polystyrene can be concentrated. So here in Valley Field, there's the uh, there's a port, so it's very convenient to uh, for the company to grow its activities and operations. Now that we talk about the technology key figures, let's talk about the project key figures. Uh, first, uh, since November 2018, the rollout of the pilot project, we wait process to date is um, more than uh, 900 pounds, uh, and uh, all the PS uh, wait at the factory of uh, PowerWave. We notice an important rejection rate of 23%. This is something that we have to ser seriously work on with the company and uh, with the citizens. In the last month, the citizens' engage engagement is about uh, 2,000 entries, uh, 200 entries uh, to the polystyrene to the polystyrene at the eco center from January 29 to February, February 23, uh, 2019. You can see in the image a picture of the form from the database that we are using at the eco center. The time required for the operation management and transportation is about two hours a week, so it's in our uh, cost evaluation. With this project, we get a lot of testimonials, positive testimonials. The citizens are generally satisfied and proud of their greener and innovative city by presenting this partnership with, with uh, PowerWaves. Um, we also get some uh, recommendations. One of them proposed to multiplicate the drop-off station to the supermarket. Uh, this recommendation uh, suppose that we will be easier for that it will be easier for the citizen to recover the PS, uh, and the project the pilot project will analyze seriously this option. But uh, the most frequent frequent questions are: Could it eventually be possible to recycle by using uh, the blue bin? Uh, collection and uh, will the waste gas used to bring quantity of PS at the eco center will pollute more than throwing it directly away? So we try to answer this question. Virginia, having already discussed part of the subject in the technology key figures, but here you can see that we calculate the PS transportation profitability and according to the assumption, for example, the PS car shipment for, from uh, Saberit Valley Field Ward into an average distance of 15 kilometers to from the eco center to power race by trucks will be profitable if around one kilogram of PS are dropped to the eco center. So to figure out what is uh, one kilogram of uh, PS, uh, you can see it, the big bag with all the different kind of material of polystyrene. The solution to have a profitable transport to the eco center if the citizen doesn't have one kilogram is to bring all the accepted material in their, in their travel at the same, the same time. So that's the solution in our co uh, communication strategy. Now uh, about the success factors are access to technology, streamlined collection and sorting criteria for citizens and employees. The process helps uh, recycle PS6 uh, indefinitely, whereas it is uh, first seen as problematic by our society. It is part of a real circular economy states of mind like Virginie told you before. The implementation of a process for recycling polystyrene improved the environmental image of users. So the generator and manufacturer of poly uh, recycled polystyrene products and all the communication, the engagement of uh, PowerAid and the municipality. 
So now the improvement to be made um, are densify the matter the matter at the eco center instead of only at the power wave plant and decrease the contamination rate because to date it's about 23 percent. Oops, there is a little mistake here. And uh, it will be uh, decreased by employee training and increase awareness of citizens on what is not number six. So if we look at the next step for the pilot project, uh, we'll continue uh, until the end of the year to follow up the uh, KPIs on a quarterly basis. So that includes tonnage, the rate of participation, the cost, contamination levels, uh, as we discussed. We'll also um, try to expand the pilot project to uh, engage uh, ICI and citizens of surrounding municipalities attending the Eco Center. Um, as per the uh, the comments we had on uh, social media, and we'll also explore compensation as part of the um, EPR compensation program for curbside recycling municipal services, um, and also uh, create a. Um, an update report uh, for the first uh, first year of the project in November 2019, and that report should include uh, our KPIs as well as success factors, and uh, we'll make it available for uh, for uh, upon request on our website as well. So that concludes our uh, presentation of the pilot project. Um, I want to thank the uh, the uh, Federation of uh, Canadian Municipalities uh, for their uh, invitation to take part in the webinar and I thank you for your attention and I uh, will be answering some questions uh, for the next few minutes. Great, thank you so much both to uh, to you Maggie and, and Virginie, uh, to both of you for uh, an excellent presentation, um, a really, really fascinating topic and uh, it's been very interesting to just to learn more about this partnership and how it unfolded. Uh, not to mention some of the, the great uh, feedback that you've gotten from your community and uh, really just hearing more about the, the innovative technology that uh, you've implemented here. Um, so we do have lots of time for questions. I see that um, we do have a lot that have come in already, so that's great. Uh, we'll work through as many as we can, of course. Uh, if we can't get to everything, uh, we'll, we'll do our best, and you're, of course, welcome to follow up uh, with Maggie or uh, Virginie if you, if you have uh, more questions at the end. Um, so to start us off, um, we had a question that was coming in asking about the breakdown process of the plastic. So every time that the plastic is recycled, does the plastic become less durable each time that it's broken down and then manufactured into something else? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, the answer is no. It's really an endless uh, process as we bring the uh, polystyrene back to its uh, original uh, molecule, which is the monomer. So the only thing that is lost through the process is the contamination. So we're able to bring the, uh, the really to break down the length of the molecules back to their original monomer um, up to 90%. So that's a very high uh, yield. And uh, after that, we can uh, put those chains back together uh, uh, with the help of a petrochemical company and create new uh, resin that's identical to the virgin. So there's no loss. It's not like the fibers which lose their, uh, uh, they get shorter and shorter after each process. That's different with uh, plastic because it's a chemical process and it's a chemical reaction. So that's why it's different and it's endlessly recyclable. Well, that's great and, and really does speak to the sort of the importance of circular economy there. It really is uh, an endless loop. Um, exactly. In terms of Continuing uh, on the, the, the vein of, of operational questions, there, there was also some questions around um, energy use and, and emissions. So I'll start with the emissions piece. Um, are there any sort of emissions that are, are released from breaking down the monomers using microwaves? Uh, everything is in a closed loop. So uh, we, we collect um, carbon as a res residue of the, uh, the process and this is sold and um, the heat is recovered to heat the building. Um, so there's not a lot of, polystyrene is a, quite an easy uh, component, chemical uh, component, so there's not a lot of residues. So the contaminants are, are broken down into carbon once uh, they, they go through the process, and we can sell uh, their waxes and the oils afterwards. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Um, and how, how about the, the energy input requirements of PyroWave compared to something like a, a chemical depolymerization technology that Loop Industries uses as an example? Uh, we didn't make the analysis to compare. Um, polystyrene, what I can say is polystyrene is made of one monomer, uh, and it's the only plastic res uh, resin that uh, is such a simple uh, assemble, assemble, okay, let's say the assembly of, uh, of molecules. So um, it does require some energy, um, but to break it down is a simple monomer. Um, if I compare to a PET plastics, for instance, there's there are two monomers resulting uh, of a depolymerization, so there's a bit more uh, energy uh, intensive. But I'm not a chemist, so <laughs> I'm I'm going to stick to what I know best, which is uh, communications and marketing. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I know that my crash course in chemistry has taught me that. <laughs> Okay, not a problem. That's a, a great answer. Um, we've also had a number of questions coming in about uh, the cleanliness of the material, and, and you did mention contamination rates, of course, but can you speak to how clean the material needs to be in order for it to go through this process? Yes, of course. Uh, in terms of the technology, um, we can accept uh, a, a certain level of contamination because, uh, for example, organic contamination is not an issue for the technology itself. Uh, because it's uh, totally purified throughout the process, uh, but of course uh, we 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 appreciate the best quality possible. So that's in terms of the technology. But Maggie can speak about the uh, uh, the at the eco center. Yes, because at the eco center, it's really important to remember that uh, there is people who work with the materials. So uh, we necessitate a kind of uh, high level of uh, salubrity, salubri uh, salubrity, uh, salubrity. Yeah, salubrity. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, we uh, we have people who have to uh, uh, take the material, put it in the bags, and uh, ship it to the um, power wave plant. And at the factory, they have to put it on uh, in the densificator. So. Uh, there is a lot of manipul manipulation uh, by humans, so uh, we ask at the population to bring the material uh, really clean. And uh, changing tack a little bit, uh, because this is such an innovative technology, um, there's some people who are wondering, uh, can you speak at all about uh, whether or not there are other communities in Quebec or across Canada that are also uh, looking at Polystyrene is this really the sort of the first uh, pilot of this of this nature that you know of, or are there other communities getting involved as well? Uh, there are um, two startups uh, that do uh, recycling of polystyrene uh, through innovation, um, and uh, they're all in Quebec. So there's Polystyrene as well. Um, so I know there's a project in Montreal uh, to that effect as well. But in terms of, uh, if you look worldwide, um, the uh, innovation is really stemming from uh, from Quebec, Canada. Uh, we are in discussions with uh, worldwide petrochemical companies and brand owners. Um, and uh, polystyrene's uh, innovation is really stemming from from Quebec. And to that effect, um, we were actually in Paris uh, last February uh, at an event, a forum on the innovative uh, recycling technology for plastics that was organized by the eco organization in Quebec, um, Eco Entreprise Quebec, and its counterpart in France, CTO. And uh, they, uh, they went uh, to a search around the world for all the startups that had innovative solutions. And among the 12 that were um, Presented that uh, three were uh, were from Quebec, so I can say that here in Canada we have uh, we have a lot of uh, creativity and a lot of uh, technology uh, to bring solutions that are uh, that could have an interest for export, uh, for instance. And uh, Canada supported uh, tackling plastic uh, challenges through uh, the G7 uh, Charter for Plastics in the Ocean. So there's a great support of all levels of government to. Uh, to um, uh, foster the uh, the uh, deployment and emergence of those uh, clean techs that are uh, that are really uh, emerging right now. 
Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, to follow up on that, uh, a number of people also, I think, are, are quite interested in, in learning more about, you know, how, how other municipalities might be able to get involved in something like this. Can you can you speak at all about uh, the growth model and and and, um, and how collaboration between other municipalities might be something that could uh, could emerge around around uh, PyroWave? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I think the pilot project that is currently uh, uh, undergoing is uh, is going to be very uh, very um, educative for us to in terms of uh, um, identifying uh, key success factors as well as uh, you know the right KPIs to reproduce and expand to a greater scale that kind of project. And to that effect, we're really proud to work with uh, the city of Salaberry de Valleyfield. I think the you know, we're very lucky to have such a great partner, and I think we need the collaboration of the whole value chain to uh, to make this work, because um, we all know that, uh, the, you know, the recycling industry has been uh, um, under pressure with the closing of the Chinese markets to exportation, so I think we, uh, we, we need to find more of those uh, local solutions. Uh, and for that, you know, the whole value chain is, needs to be mobilized. So we're, we're very lucky to work with a, a partner that is so committed. And, uh, you know, in terms of the demand, uh, we already have uh, supply agreements uh, with petrochemical companies uh, that are worldwide players for the next two years. So there is a demand uh, for sure uh, on a worldwide scale for uh, recycled resign and uh, polystyrene in particular. Um, I think brand owners are also under pressure to uh, uh, find solutions so they have 100% recycled content for their packaging. So I think we, uh, we bring solutions uh, through innovation that uh, uh, bring up new possibilities. So, uh, but for that, you know, to, I think the project will help us identify the key success factors. And I think one of them is to have uh, quality material. We also need to have a concentration of volume. So that's why to have uh, the port in Salaberry de Valleyfield can be a very strategic location as we can bring in some supply material as well as uh, we have an open route to uh, markets from the Great Lakes and uh, the East Coast of the United States and even through Europe. So this is a strategic location uh, and I think uh, those uh, those areas like this can, uh, can be a good ground to uh, to develop some clusters for uh, mixed plastic recycling, for example, and bring a higher value uh, to something that was once uh, waste. I don't know if Maggie would like to add some some words in terms of uh, uh, you know the partnership and uh, the you know working together. Uh. Yes, um, working together is uh, key because uh, startup like uh, Pure Ways have solution. Uh, to a problem of uh, the community. So we have to uh, work together and uh, the city assistant will benefit a startup like uh, Pure Wave. So um, here in Salaberry Valleyfield, we have some uh, uh, be, some uh, premises, uh, tax credit or uh, support to business uh, development like we do now. And uh, it's uh, a key to uh, to find the solution and uh, including it in the 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 loop of uh, the economy. So uh, that's uh, that's the way that we develop the partnership with the Powerwave and other uh, startup on uh, our territory. Well, that's great. Thank you. And uh, maybe to elaborate a little bit on the partnership, um, did you experience any any challenges in, in being able to develop us in the first time? Anything uh, that made it difficult, or has it been fairly fairly smooth sailing since the beginning? We had some uh, challenge at the before the beginning of the pilot project, and the one of them it's. Uh, to, uh, because Powerwave, it's a startup, was uh, to find the, the the best moment to start the project. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because we we had a kind of uh, uncertainty about uh, the quantity of uh, material we can bring at the the plant. So uh, Powerwave in uh, search and development have uh, some uh, some uh, preparation before to uh, to take our material so uh, uh, that's uh, our major uh, main uh, challenge to find the the 
the good moment to start the project. So uh, that's why we started the discussion in uh, 2017, and the project starts in November to uh, 2018. Yeah, and I think the great commitment of the city uh, who facilitated our, uh, our ramping up and our, our, um, our setting up in the, in the, the industrial park has, uh, has greatly helped accelerate the, uh, the deployment of the technology as well. And maybe I would like to add one thing that I, I might not have uh, been clear on uh, when we, I was asked about the, uh, what we do with gas emissions. Um, just to mention that we burn the, you know, as I said, it's a closed loop. So uh, there are some gases that are, that are some gas that are uh, produced in the process that are burned. So that's what we do uh, to that effect. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for adding that addition as well. Um, keeping kind of on the, the vein of the partnership and, and uh, community involvement, uh, would you be able to speak to some of the communication tactics that have been used to promote to the public to participate in this program? Uh, for example, do they do? Does the public receive incentives or anything like that to to participate, especially businesses? Uh, to uh, communicate to the the population, we uh, multiply all the platforms. So um, we start with uh, um, press. Uh, 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 conference de presse. press conference yes uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, we put a lot of um, little movie that uh, incitate the population to the uh, action uh, in our uh, media social uh, social media and uh, we uh, simplify all the message to the population um, as you can see in the presentation uh, we had um, uh, strategy of communication in the movie. Uh, so uh, there is um, uh, uh, always the, the same uh, the same visual uh, at all in all the platforms. So uh, we uh, multiply uh, this uh, everywhere, and uh, we had a lot of interview uh, at the radio, at the television, and uh, we made it circulate in the social media and on TV, on radio. So uh, that's why the population is uh, well mobilized. Okay, great. Um, in terms of uh, sort of the final product, if we, we know what that the uh, the products are being made from plastic that originates from the community, but what is that? What happens to the to the end result? Is it is it sold back uh, to local businesses or does it is it sold to larger corporations? Um, are buyers typically local or or what or are they from uh, international markets? We're talking about the oil that is produced. Uh, yes, the the final product. Yeah. Yes, yes. The oil that is uh, rich in monomer is sold to uh, uh, Starolution, which is a subsidy of INEOS, and it's located in Sarnia, Ontario. And we already have like a two-year uh, supply agreement with them. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a great demand for uh, recycled resign. Um, the polystyrene industry is looking for solutions to create 100% recycled content for their uh, food packaging and other packaging. So the demand is there. Um, we also have uh, uh, seen uh, many reports uh, in the last months, uh, especially uh, McKinsey issued a report and the Smart Prosperity Institute uh, in Ottawa issued a report to, um, to explain that uh, chemical recycling um, and recycle design is in expansion and it'll be a greater and greater demand in, uh, as a forecast in the coming years. So uh, we're very optimistic that uh, the, the solution, uh, you know, we already have those agreements uh, with the petrochemicals. So we know uh, firsthand that uh, there's a demand and also to bring higher value to a, a waste product that is uh, traditionally a cost center when it's sent to landfill because it's uh, uh, right now seen as a contaminant. Uh, so it's really transforming a cost center into a profit center and high value material um, and also decoupling uh, plastics from the, the petrol, the, the crude oil uh, is also key in the business model. Um, so um, I think it's a good example of circular economy also because there's a uh, highly skilled jobs uh, uh, attached to the technology and uh, expanding this, this model. Uh, and those are green jobs as well. 
And as we said, there's a, an export potential. So I think it has a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, the factors that we look into when we talk about circular economy. Okay, great, thank you. Um, would you also be able to speak to uh, whether or not any other types of plastics are able to be recycled using this technology? Um, a few examples people have mentioned, uh, like black plastic, um, like from meat packaging, that kind of thing that it wouldn't necessarily be the, the um, number six, but would still be similarly difficult to recycle? Uh, yes. Um, as uh, you know, we're ramping up, uh, we, we want to tackle uh, plastic number six first, so polystyrene. But the microwave technology and the depolymerization process uh, can be used also on plastic number two, four, and five. So uh, we're talking uh, about a meet, mid, let's say midterm uh, horizon to uh, to implement this technology on you know mixed plastics. But uh, yeah, we want to make sure that uh, the technology is robust to start with uh, with plastic number six. But uh, we'll definitely uh, look into mixed plastics in the in the near future. Okay, that's great. Um, and maybe a question more for Maggie as well, but uh, does the city have any kinds of programs about uh, either extended producer responsibility or even just education around actually discouraging the use of polystyrene to begin with, rather than the recycling process is, of course, a great feature, but uh, reducing before the recycling is always a, an important feature as well. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? I'm not sure. Are there any programs or, or education initiatives at the city that um, focus on reducing the use of, of polystyrene yeah, to yeah. begin with? Uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, in the government pol policy, uh, there is um, the 3RV uh, hierarchy. So uh, the first it's, uh, is uh, reduce. So of course, in all the education of the population, uh, that's the first thing that we uh, uh, we ask at the population. We uh, we do a lot of sensibilization and uh, the waste management communication strategy is uh, start with the reduction. So um, when we uh, we we are talking, we are talking uh, at large of waste management, uh, the first thing that we uh, we call to action to the population is to uh, uh, add a, re a reflection when they are in front of uh, uh, the wrapping of uh, their food or of the project to, uh, to don't have this, uh, this material to have to uh, uh, decide if it's going to uh, recycling or to uh, the uh, the elimination, and it's a it's major because it's about our per environmental performance uh, at the end. Oh, that's great! Thank you. Um, as a follow-up to that, uh, some municipalities have also discussed the idea of actually banning single-use plastics and, and that kind of thing. And uh, for Virginie, um, would a ban? How would a ban on those plastics actually impact the use of this technology for your for your uh, for for pyro, pyro wave? Well, I think you know, I we're we're the same uh, wavelength as uh, Maggie in terms of you know uh, we need to first manage the consumption at the source. Uh, I know for having visited many sorting centers that those small items can be a real nightmare for the conveyors and the optical sorters. Um, so, you know, I think uh, the plastic um, uh, challenge is, uh, is very complex and we need a portfolio of solutions to tackle it. So uh, we're here to do one part and I think we need many solutions and they, they, there's room for, for a an area of solutions to to tackle the challenge that is immense, you know. So uh, for uh, the polystyrene, uh, if we talk about uh, yogurt, uh, yogurt, for example, packaging, uh, you know, the that's the kind of uh, food packaging that uh, is uh, it's an industry that is looking for alternatives and, and and to reduce their environmental footprint. So that that kind of technology can bring a, a real solution uh, uh, to to that challenge. 
Um, but you know, there there are many solutions, and we we need to look into many of those to to really tackle this complex issue. And now maybe one other question for Maggie. Um, were there any concerns about favoring a particular company through this partnership based on um, municipal procurement rules? Could you repeat the question, please? Were there any concerns um, at your municipality about favoring a particular company? So having this partnership with Pyro, PyroWave uh, based on the sort of the, the rules of the municipal procurement rules um, with your municipality? Les achats publics, ça vous aide. Okay. Uh, the, uh, there is no uh, no competition uh, between other uh, business on the territory or uh, in Quebec in general because uh, at first uh, there is two uh, two companies, Powerwave and uh, Polystyver, and uh, Powerwave was just a start the the possibility to uh, take the material from. Uh, uh, other uh, other producer than uh, the the contact that the the company have and Polystyver was saturated with the, the 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 other pilot project in other municipalities. So uh, to put this uh, pilot project in uh, in place, it was uh, really easy to to go directly with uh, Powerwave, and there is no. Uh, no other uh, problem problematic in uh, in this way. But okay, you know, we, it's a pilot project, so it's not uh you know we don't have a formal agreement. It's really to uh, to document. Like the idea of the project is to document uh, the KPIs, um, and then there'll be uh, an analysis after that, and uh, you know. We'll, so that that was the goal of the pilot project. So there was no formal uh, contractual agreement, if I may express it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very a pilot project to to document uh, a new way of of recycling polystyrene. Okay, great, thank you. And I'll move back to uh, some more operational questions because I, I understand these ones are a little bit uh, a little bit harder to answer. Um, so uh, in terms of um, the technology itself. It, what is the minimum uh, size of, of, of module that's possible? Like if you were working with uh, on a mid-scale, like if you wanted to implement this at a commercial warehouse or at an institution, would something like that be possible as well? Well, that's a, another good question. Um, ideally, you know, the, the modular um, um, component of the technology is to, uh, to deal with uh, small, small volumes uh, where the supply is. But if you add on uh, modules, then you can increase the capacity, the treatment capacity. Um, so it's uh, uh, it's all based on an analysis of where the supply is, and you know uh, how much volume can be uh, brought in through you know a specific location. So there's not a single answer to this. It's really a, um, a tailored approach that. Uh, will have to take once uh, you know we, uh, to deploy the technology elsewhere uh, but in the short term our our objective is to uh, increase the number of modules here in Salaberry de Valley field uh, and create uh, ultimately a, a cluster for chemical recycling uh, for mixed plastic through uh, you know all the uh, transportation modes uh, that are available to us uh, including uh, uh, the port uh, that gives us access to a lot of market, uh, um, you know, and and also uh, that can be optimized through uh, through logistics, transportation logistics. Perfect, thank you. Um, and uh, could you also just a, a quick clarification question? Could you tell us what the capacity of the plant is, for example, in, in tons per uh, day or, or week? Well, right now it's uh, 100 to 200 kilograms an hour, so we can say it's about a, a, a thousand kilograms per day uh, for one module. So that's the capacity. 
and um, and that's on one uh, shift. So you know, eventually we could increase the number of shifts and, and so on. According to uh, some study in uh, Quebec uh, by uh, Recy Quebec uh, in 2010, the potential of uh, of uh, a territory like us to um, to, to produce uh, polystyrene, it's about uh, 0.73 percent. So uh, for 40,000 uh, 40, uh, citizens, it's about uh, 150 tons a year. So uh, it can give you a kind of a scale. <laughs> well, in Quebec, we generate 22,000 tons of uh, polystyrene a year, uh, but also we can get supply. That's post-consumer uh, supply. And then there's post-industrial supply. If we look at all the, uh, the dairy industry, for example, uh, and we can also um, rely on supply from uh, from uh, Ontario or the Great Lakes area, even the the eastern uh, uh, to the east coast of the United States. So there, you know, there's there's a market out there for for uh, polystyrene recycling that is uh, that is uh, looking for solutions. Uh, so so the polystyrene that is right now that that is sent to landfill is turned into uh, um, high value material. Great, thank you so much. Um, and, and being conscious of, of time, I, I wanted to give you both an opportunity. If you had any final uh, key takeaways or, or larger messages that you would want to share uh, with the audience before we close out, anything, anything kind of to, to wrap it up and bring it home with everybody. Well, thank you. Yes. Uh, first of all, I think we're really a privileged. Uh, uh, at Parwave to to have such a great partner as the city of Salaberry de Valleyfield, so I think that is a you know a key uh, a key a success factor to 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 underline and then, you know there's a really committed city. Um, I think also that mo mobilization of the citizens is key, and the city has done a great job to 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 get that. Um, I think uh, communication is key and uh, innovation. So I think that those are important factors to uh, to um, uh, success for such a, a pilot project. But uh, I think uh, the the mobilization of the whole value chain is is uh, is, uh, is paramount importance. And uh, uh, you know we we need to look at uh, a different way. Uh, to, to find solutions and uh, how we will uh, develop our infrastructures in the future and align the whole uh, supply chain uh, to get there, to get to a real uh, circular economy. So um, I think we all look forward to uh, the conclusion of the, the project to, to uh, look at the, uh, the lessons learned and, and be able to extend the project to a greater scale. Great. Uh, if there is nothing else, then um, I'd like to take the opportunity just to, to thank you both again uh, so much for taking the time to to share your work with us. Um, and a big kudos to you both. Uh, for those of you on the line, uh, Maggie and Virginie also presented in this morning in French, so I'm sure they're uh, they've, they've had a quite a quite a workout today in terms of uh, giving the presentations <laughs> for us. So really, really big thanks to, to both of you. Um, we really appreciate the the expertise that you brought to the table. Um, the work you're doing is so exciting that we're, we're just thrilled that you were here and you could share it with us today. Um, thank, you, I'd also, thank you. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the uh, the participants as well uh, for your active engagement in the webinar and uh, for your, your questions and comments throughout. Um, it, it always really helps when we've got some uh, good good fodder for, for questions at the end and, and we certainly did today. Um, so before you sign off, we, we would love to hear from you uh, and have your feedback. So we, uh, we do have a, a survey an evaluation form that should open um, in a pop-up window when you when you exit the webinar. So this is your chance to let us know what would help you to better manage your plastic waste uh, and integrate uh, a circular economy approach. Um, and so thank you all once again. This is the last webinar of our series. Uh, they have all now been recorded and will be up on the SCM's YouTube channel and our website uh, in a few weeks. Um, so thank you all, especially those of you who joined us for, for each and every webinar. It's been a pleasure to have you on board with us. and. Uh, we think it was a great success thanks to, uh, to your involvement. So, so thank you so much um, and have a great rest of your day.